Thank you uh, for being here tonight. Steve, here we go. First, a little history. This is Ellen Trent's story, matriarch of Bozeman's famed story family. In 1919, two sons, Thomas Byron and Nelson Jr., financed and oversaw the construction of the building you are sitting in now. The faithful boys named it Ellen. It's a very nice present for mom, wouldn't you agree? 1922, to the left of the Ellen sign, you may be able to make out the word pool. An older gentleman once told me, as a young boy, his job was to run to the second story bowling alley and tell the vaudeville performers that they were almost ready for the next act. He also explained to me that more times than not, uh, he would interrupt a poker game. 1929, sound equipment was installed for the latest craze, Talking Pictures. A poster announces the musical 50 Million Frenchmen, creating a lot of excitement to see one of the first movie musicals filmed in Technicolor. Fast forward 70 years later to the Ellen, went from attracting lines around the block to still relying on a 1919 furnace. From a Chronicle story in 2003, Nancy Johnson, who watched the 4 p.m. Matrix matinee with her grandson Wednesday, purchased a blanket outside the Ellen from a patron who'd bought it at nearby Sylvester's for the 1 p.m. show. <laughs> the grand lady of yesteryear had become a fading star. You can groan here, sad, yes. Of all 20 images, this is the saddest by far. That faulty furnace, no air conditioning, a leaky roof ultimately shuttered the Ellen. And on Friday and Saturday nights, everyone was going to that local blockbuster instead of coming here. Fortunately, we know there is more to the story. October 2004, I met with this beautiful woman, arts patron, Elise Donahue, and proposed that Montana Theater Works, a local nonprofit community theater group, purchase and restore the building. After a few seconds of silence, Elise said, uh, everybody asks this time of year for end of, end of year donations. I'm giving my money and time to the Ellen Theater. 2008, utilizing original architect Fred Wilson's hand-drawn blueprints and, and designs from George Matson, Martel Construction, with Todd Gertson at the lead, took on the mammoth task of renovation. First and foremost, make the building safe and fix that furnace. Needing a larger men's room, the ideal location was the old concession area, seen on the left. After restoring the corner wall, a mold was made of the plaster trim so it could be seamlessly replicated. On Fred Wilson's blueprints, this space was initially designated as the Story Family Dining Room. At top, these wooden doors swung both ways and separated the inner and outer lobbies. Wanting to repurpose as many items as possible, one of these doors is now upstairs in our second story ballroom. The door opening on the right, that was the original access to the antiquated furnace in the basement, which still needed repair. Under the stage received its makeover as well. There's dressing rooms down under here. A few treasures were discovered, such as ornate exit signs, and you can see them on the way out there next to the handicapped restrooms. Also in the basement, 50 red seats from 1919. On the original uh, blueprints, it says, these two rows, story, family, and friends in the balcony, and those seats are there now. Above left, the old lobby, removing acoustic ceiling tiles, revealed ornate crown molding. Where pieces were damaged or missing, artist Mark Milner of Dependable Paint perfectly matched and repaired the style of a bygone era. None of it would be possible without the generosity of Elise, Karen and Klein Gilhausen, Bill Martell, and the Taylor family. December 2008, Ellen reopened her doors and welcomed 6,000 people to see A Christmas Carol. Plays, musicals, concerts, and movies were added to the calendar, but there was more to do, such as honoring Fred Wilson's original 1919 design for Ellen's facade. Up to this point, renovation work focused specifically on upgrades for the lobby and the restrooms, but curb appeal with faded metal doors and crumbling overhang, the building looked like an abandoned discount movie house. Plans were launched in preparation of Ellen's centennial celebration. Kudos to many, including Don and Marilyn Murdoch, Frank Seekin, Bradner Design, Martell, Voss Electric, Ole Nelson, and stained glass artist David Feld. This multi-year project was finished 99 years and eight months after Ellen first opened. So for her 100th birthday, technically we were ahead of schedule. By 2020, Ellen was busy 210 days and nights a year. Annual attendance, over 55,000 people. But 
then the pandemic hit. And thanks to loyal donors, we were able to get plaster repaired, put on some fresh paint, and de decades of old furnace soot was removed from the cloth burgundy side panels. Closing the theater had its silver lining. Regarding that furnace, before we opened in 2008, a woman stopped by construction and asked what we still needed. I replied, a new heating and air conditioning system. The cost was $240,000, which we didn't have. She said, if I can have two tickets to every show, I will give you that money. I said you could have four tickets. <laughs> Feels nice in here, doesn't it? This is the fly space where scenery flies up to be hidden. First step of the recent renovation, dismantle all the original apparatus. Next, figure out how to get 19,625 pounds of steel up above that wood grid, which is 60 feet off of the ground. Eliminated was the 1919 electrical panel and 3,400 feet of hemp rope. Manually operating the rope opened and closed curtains, moved scenery, and lowered the giant movie screen. 75 pound sandbags made the job quite a workout, even for the burliest of backstage crew. Instead of rope, now all scenery, curtains, and lights move smoothly with metal pulleys, cables, and precise lead counterweights. In fact, this control panel on the right, this is one of my favorite features. <laughs> yeah, so much better, huh? <laughs> there she is, 104 years old, or young. The Ellen is not a venue, but a gathering place for the arts to entertain, educate, and inspire. 16 years ago, we set out to reopen her doors. Embraced by her audience, there is no doubt that Ellen will be a vibrant and vital part of this community for generations to come. Thank you.